I remember in this view of life, you were talking about how the Europeans used to go and study other cultures and rate them essentially on a scale of civilized to savage. And that was the wrong way of, obviously, the wrong way of going about it. A better way was to be, would be something akin to looking at the Inuit and seeing how they're accustomed to the cold and they have their own practices to deal with it. And then we can say, oh, they're not savage, they're adapted to that environment. Okay, so then my question was, they're adapted because they survive well in that environment. Then the Europeans came along and invented cities and technology, and now they can survive in Alaska and the coldest parts of the world. Maybe better, but that's a question I want to ask you, is what does it mean to be adapted? And if, and if these white Europeans, let's just call them white Europeans, came and settled and now made brick houses with fire and electricity that goes right through, are they not more adapted than the Inuit then? Because they're able to survive better in these colder environments. Oh, you, there's a whole bunch of things you raised there, so let's try to unpack them one by one. Uh, I'm lucky to be trained as an evolutionary biologist. A lot of people that are playing this game uh, uh, were trained in some of the human-related disciplines, and they've picked up their evolutionary theory. Playing what game? Uh, well, the whole thinking of all aspects of humanity from an evolutionary perspective, basically this view of life, um, extending evolutionary thinking to explain all aspects of, of humanity. That's the game that I'm... Sorry, you mean to say that you have the advantage in that you were ensconced in evolutionary thinking first, then started to apply it outwards. Yeah, other people yeah, and actually, yeah, and I'm a bit unusual uh, that way. Uh, the reason I mention it is that um, um, sophisticated evolutionary thinking includes uh, basically showcases adaptation, but there's a lot of other stuff as well. And so when we look at things that are out there, uh, sometimes they're adaptive, sometimes they're not. Even when they're adaptive, then um, what counts as adaptive in the evolutionary sense of the word doesn't necessarily correspond to in the normative sense of the word. So back to the way we should be looking at cultures. Um, and during the Victorian, Victorian era, it was uh, very difficult for Darwin, along with his colleagues, to not to think of European culture as superior in some sense to all other cultures. Uh, yet, a more true evolutionary approach, as you just said, would be that most cultures are, uh, at least to some degree, well adapted to their uh, uh, circumstances. And so uh, that's a more respectful uh, way to approach cultures, and one which is truer to evolutionary uh, theorists. So in that sense, uh, the Inuits are better adapted to an Arctic climate than, than uh, Europeans, at least at first. Now you're saying that um, uh, s such modern conveniences as housing and and uh, heating and, and Power so grid. on is well adapted. And of course, those have been adopted by Inuits. They don't live in igloos. Uh, but if they did, let's imagine that there are some that still do. Well, I mean, that's not imaginary. There's all kinds of... Uh, of uh, indigenous people that uh, actually want to, want to stick to their indigenous uh, ways and to, to a, a greater or lesser degree. And, and one point to make, I think, is that that should be their choice. So, uh, and you see very interesting regions such as Ecuador, which have still a large indigenous and diverse, you know, many tribes in Ecuador that are now being represented in, in, uh, in the government. And so it's like our choice, what do we want to do? Do we want to modernize or, or not? Often they might. I mean, such things as, as medicine. I mean, who wants to do without modern medicine? Not many people. So, so it's a, it's a very complex situation, but one which needs to be handled in a uh, egalitarian fashion that accords respect to all of the different uh, 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 stakeholders. There's a sense in which, and this is once again the, the egalitarian 
impulse, no matter who I am, what culture I represent, uh, there's some sense in which I need to be a moral equal and that my existence counts. I have some kind of say in the decision-making process based on my values. And so that's the, that's the concept of moral um, equality, which I think is pretty much uh, culturally universal, not restricted to weird societies, is that uh, however the us gets defined, then, um, then there's some uh, feeling of, of equality and that, that has a, 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 an insistent dimension, basically. Not only am I a moral equal, but I will resist you if you infringe upon, infringe upon that. So if we're going to do something together, it has to be in some sense with my, with my uh, acquiescence. I have, to, I have to be able to say yes to that. 